Hello everybody, how you doing? What's up? Cedric here, CRS in the commentary, and I'll be reviewing WWE's Bash in Berlin. And my note taking is almost like I'm doing commentary on the match. But real quick, and I mean actually real quick, this is coming out real late because my daughter bought home a cold, runny nose, voice not working too well, coughing, couldn't talk. Not not for the extended period I need for this. But now everything is better and I am really forcing myself to talk like this. <laughs> it's it's really difficult because I want to really, I just better if I talk like this because then I can actually get things out and I don't have to worry about coughing so much. But I don't know how that's gonna to translate to all of you. So I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm going to do this, and any points of coughing, I am going to be muting the mic best that I can while I try to read the other side of the screen. So that's that's the challenge. Cough, I will mute and try to read the other side of the screen. Let's go. All right. So let's start off with arguably the best match of the night. Arguably. It depends on your mindset, your mood, the moment. Because I see, because yeah, as you can see, the marquee for this is Punk and McIntyre. So, ah, uh, it's ah. Uh. So, oh, and also I got to get this out because Jim Cornette is uploading his, and I can't listen to his until I do mine, because I don't want his infecting what I say. All right. So WWE undisputed title: Kevin Owens versus Cody Rhodes. This was a good match. This was a good match. You think it's going into the nam nah, but it don't. They did a good job with this. The best ring intro, I think, of the night it was Kevin Owens. He did his thing. He came out, but you could, you could see in his eyes. You could see it. You could see in his eyes. This is a wrestling match. I am going to go out there and I'm going to fight. You can see it. His mood set the tone. He sat on that top rope in deep thought during his ring call. He didn't respond. He didn't do anything. He just sat there. You can tell he had a lot on his mind. Um, it, it, the only other person I can really say I saw I see do this for a big match whether it's a title or not is Naito Tetsuya or Tetsuya Naito for those that watch New Japan or even have watched any of it it actually pulled me in into it you know and I was sitting here thinking does Cody know what he's about to fight not who what that's how stoic Kevin Owens was looking. So Kevin remained up top during the champion's ring call and a bit after. Just sat there. Makes you wonder what's you know, like what's going through that man's mind. Owen looks serious beyond what this match is. And I swear the fans was chanting for Cody. It sounded now that it's German and they're chanting. It almost sounded like elite, elite, Cody elite. Hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Don't really matter, but Cody was looking kind of like, huh? He looked a little confused. I was like, maybe that's what they are chanting. I don't know. So they started off with some technical pro wrestling exchanges. Owen's demeanor sets the true atmosphere for this match. Calm, thoughtful, and it allowed him to evade that springboard rounding kick. And then as soon as Cody hit the mat, senton. Owens was on him. That that little exchange, the tie up, the calculations, the the evasion, certain little reversals, and then bam, preemptive counter move. That set the tone. That's what I'm talking about. It's stuff like that. He even he frustrated Cody. Owens, he took control of the match. Spilled to the outside, and then he threw Cody in. Then the tide turned. This match was about a 50 50. Cody used, um, who Cody used, um, hold up. 
Cody used the uh, was it a key lock, and they said that's a unique move. No, that's basic. That's like pro wrestling. What? That's that's really basic. You know that that goes back to the early '80s, if not mid to late '70s. It's a, it's a key lock, short arm scissors. It's, but then he got the figure four grapevine or figure four leg lock, as people know it. Um, you know he got that for a little short bit. You know, and he lost the advantage and. He was thrown outside, and and then that's where Owens hit an apron frog splash. That was nice. He got a two count after throwing him back in the ring. Cody took full control at this point, going for the uh, cover after a few signature moves. Owens uh, counters Cody with event, and, and eventually he gets countered with a springboard ace crusher, or they call it a Cody cutter, I think, for a two count. They did a nice short strike exchange, very short, leading into Owens doing the pump handle fisherman kneeling net breaker. Nice. We got a two count on that. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. Both of these guys going for the pin. You okay? You're not gonna get it. You, it's too early, or it's not right. But they're going for the pin on these these big moves. They're going for the cover. I'm trying to win. Owens hit a super steamroller for a two count. Or, you know, I I, I mean, come on. These, this, that's, that's good in-ring logic. Owens counter Rhodes attempts to uh, the whippersnapper, or others call it the stunner. Um, but that was reversed into a dragon screw net breaker, or crossroads, as they'll call it. Got a two count. Owens, he, uh, he counter Rhodes on the middle rope. He got a super 180 fisherman buster, but he that was a two count. Almost a three. They fight back and forth, firing each other up. Uh, Cody did a rope run, but his leg gave out, and that was the crux of the match that kicked it into a new gear. Perfectly done. Others that wondered about the knee, the commentary kept talking it up, although I barely listened to commentary. And then next thing you know, bam, leg goes out. And then that's, you know, and, and outside Cody, he, you know, look, Owens went to work on it like he should. Now, he didn't do it like a flare or an Anderson, but he worked on it. And Cody was shouting at him like, shouted, to, you know, I'm all right. And then he took a kick to the knee. Owens tells uh, Graves to shut up before returning to the ring because Corey Graves was just yelling. You know, get on them and do this. And where's the, you know, you need to be the, the Owens of old and yada, yada. You want to win this match? He's like, shut up. I was like, he, he was pissed. Owens hits the stunner for a two count. Cody counters and hits a two crossroads. I was like, here's the third, yada, yada. Nope. Owens uh, escaped, uh, hit the stunner for a two count. Now, my note was, we still need to see the swan time from Owens before the match can reach a true near end. Will that hold true? That's what I had to write real quick. And so Owens, he goes up top, swan time, hit the knees, crossroads, three count. I nailed it. They nailed it. It was the right moment, the right time. The fans were there. And they and the one, two, three, Cody retains. That's that was a classic match and that's how the road that was my note this was a classic match that should not be ignored that was true that match could hold up true in any era that was a damn good match we're not gonna say any era because honestly you go back to the 60s and 50s they'll be like wow the the, the jumping off the ropes is that is that a thing are they ballerinas <laughs> so uh, can't say any era but, but but most most errors, I'll say from '68 and up. Um, the ref places the belt on Cody, who calls for Kevin to stay in the ring. Owens refuses Cody's hand, and then stands and they hug it out, you know. And Owens, um, the camera got so in his damn face. He had to, he had to swat it away, you know. And so I'm waiting for the strike, you know. I'm like, okay. You won, raising hands. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Owens got to hit him. He's going to hit him. He's got to hit him. Owens got his hand raised. He won't let Cody raise his hand. He keeps raising Cody's. I'm like, yep. 
But then, no, no, no heel turn, no nothing like that. It was awesome. The turn didn't happen. Extra. That's extra mwah, chef's kiss. That's another chef's kiss. That was good. That was good. Um, that's, that's, I love that. They make sure they put the elements in that draws you in, and then they say, nope, not what you think. They don't do it all the time. Sometimes you got to do exactly what you're going to present. But they're doing, they're doing this right. I wait so much because of the past to see the stupid that's going to come out. Now, a lot of no company can be perfect. And it seems like WWE is slowly and steadily restructuring itself right now. That's what Paul Levesque and the others are doing. Um, it's a slow restructure. We're going to get rid of certain things, certain elements. We're going to bring more. Of, it seems like they're keeping the pro wrestlers. They need people that's, that can carry a match. And I just get beat on until they, well, I, I, I'm in charge now. So that's what it seems like. I'm, I'm enjoying that. Next we get a WWE Women's Tag Team title match. Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair versus Elba Fire and Isla Dawn. I can't want to say Isla Dawn or Isla or something. It's just, it's, ah. But yeah, Fire and Dawn, they're, they're the tag champions. Um, if they were like some super American team, they'd be like Dawn's early light or something like that. I don't know. Um, anyway, look. I, no, not a lot of no, not, not notes. Nope. The ref lost me on this match in the opening. He won't let Jade help her partner because she's not legal, Okay. That's on the outside of the ring. But the champs are at the midst of double teaming Bel Air. Okay, and I can promise you that one of them was not the legal wrestler. So that didn't make sense. You're gonna tell Jay, no, no, you're not legal, you're not legal, while her partner is getting double teamed by the legal and illegal wrestler. So logically speaking, You should probably just, you know, do this every single match. So the champions or top contenders can double team, but the challengers cannot. Or baby faces can never help their partner. And you got to stick with that. You got to do something because this didn't make sense. You're supposed to be an impartial referee, but you're making a partial decision. So the ref and the heels keep Bel Air from tagging. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff that Jay could have helped with. And he's like, no, nah, nope, nope, nope. The ref wouldn't break up the hair pull or double team of the, of the heels. The heels can just do what they want. And the ref is watching them. And I'm sitting here like, this um, is looking a little uh, not right. Bianca makes the hot tag and Jay takes control. So she's, she's a little house of fire. The heels, and see, I keep... I don't know if it's autocorrected or not. We keep saying the hills. Uh, the, the heels cut it short and hit the double team move on Bel Air, uh, on Bel Air, but that was just for a two count. Jay used the dominator on Bianca on Al on Alba, but that was for a two count. Jay causes a misstep and and the and, uh, on the champs, and that turns the tide of the match. The challengers hit their double team move and get a th get yeah, get get the three count. It, it just it was it was a how can I say this slightly more dramatized standard match. But you got new champs, and I had to note that this needed to happen. They look better together. Jade and Bianca look better together, and, and the former champs look like plausible threats in the future. So the competition makes drama. This was done well, you know, because I see um, Elba and um, Isla, and I'm like, they don't, they ain't big enough to do much. But the way this match went, I'm like, you know what, you, you changed my mind. The, the, you know, I see them now as a plausible 
threat. You know, but Isla Dawn simply takes me off with her face. You know, and then again, I have to say that because maybe I've watched too much anime recently. Because her, her face and that smile and stuff, being a heel, it, she got to me. So she did her job well. She did her job well. All right. <clears throat> Now we get to the, I'd say mid-main event, with a lot of confusion at, at, at points, but they, they're, they're trying to make it work, but I think they did it wrong. Um, we get the strap match. And this, this is a workup. Um, so they got lights set up for the fans to know who is up or down or tied on posts touched. So Drew McIntyre is red, CM Punk is green. So there's Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk. They explained the rules, but they left something out. Ugh. And, there's, and this is a very important thing to this match. They changed the rules a little bit. I'm not exactly happy about it, but it was a great opening ambush. Punk was boasting on the apron, and McIntyre knocked him down. The ref tried to stop him, but, you know, Drew's a big dude, you know. But, but that was great for the start of the match. You know, it ain't supposed to be like, okay, we're in here. Gentleman's handshake. Let us take the straps onto our wrists now. Okay, time to lock up and wrestle. Let's do this. So, nah, none, none, none of that. None of that. Um, Michael Cole did a good job saying that the match only starts when the strap is on each opponent's wrist and the bell has sounded. So that's good. Uh, Punk has been beat down and whipped when the bell rings. My issue is Drew only had to be put in the corner to slap the buckle to get a point. This means he can just run to each corner while Punk lays on the mat and then win. Y'all see that? And so if Drew McIntyre said, okay, look, pick him up, strong body slam. Pick him up, strong body slam. And he just darts to a corner. Tag, get to another tag, get another tag. He's just running in a circle at the ropes. Punk can't get to him. He could have done that. Literally, he could have done that. that. That was my issue. Now, the way the rules used to be was you had to drag your opponent. So you slam him, you got him beat down. You have to get to his wrist, hold his wrist or his arm and drag him across the mat and tag the corner. That, I mean, it's almost like a submission match. Um, <clears throat> hold up. <sighs> okay. Um, so, so I was like, that kind of took me out of it a little bit. Uh, the fact that they don't have to drag them to the corner. So my note was at least when Punk knocked Drew down, it removed the point. That's good. They kept that rule. After a few whippings and beatings and, the, uh, and, on, and, and fighting on the announce table, Punk gets a table and and he set it up a little bit but then he was blocked blocked from uh using it at the time drew gets a chair rams it into punk punk eventually starts to fight back drew slams punk on the chair in the ring punk sold like it was bloody mercy it's going well you know i'm just i'm just like man you know, not having to be dragged to the corner it, it kind of it took a lot of steam out of me i, I really want I, I think that's a very important element to a strap match um, Punk looked like he got hard weighed there. He had a little blood on his forehead. Punk knows how to blade himself. That's why I say it looked like a hard way. It's hard to tell because if Punk blade himself, it's gonna it's gonna run. He was sweating. It's hot. His body is going full bore. Heart rate is up. I I assume that if he bladed himself, it'd just be coming down. But it wasn't. Eventually, they both hit their finish. But it means nothing, really. 
you know, normally hit your finish, drag them to the ropes. It's not happening. So they just lay it out. Eventually, Drew, Drew touched two corners. Punk leaves the ring, yanks Drew into the corner and into a chair, which stopped his momentum. I didn't know that chair was there. I, I forgot that Punk even set that up or anyone set it up. But he, he yanked Drew and Drew went stumbling. I was like, oh my, and he hit that chair. I was like, where did that come from? <laughs> so that was, that was good. Punk hit a shining wizard. Drew cradled him and used the Berserker's finish to drop him onto the table on the outside. If anybody remember the Berserker. So, and they let you know the Berserker somebody I thought was going to win the Royal Rumble way back in the day. Because his finishing move, his finishing move was to grab him, lift him up, and drop him from the top rope to the floor. Go out, throw him into the ring, and pin him. Um, so, Drew gets a fireman's carry on Punk. And he walks to each corner with both touching. And after the third one, Punk's drop, Punk drops down. And they and they battle, and that and that fight dropped them both into the series. Okay, so they got he got three. They both had three, and they Punk had to make a sacrifice. Um, and that made that made, had a thought jump into my head about that, but I'll get to that in a second. Punk applied the Scorpion uh, Death Lock, and Riff was like. Okay, and Drew is tapping, and the fans, you tapped out. And then he tries to push up, he's fighting, and then he taps again. I was like, man, perfectly done. I'm letting y'all know that's perfectly done. He grabs a hold of the ropes, and he's grabbing. The ref is like, hey, I you know, it is what it is. You know, and, and then he just collapses. I was like, oh, okay, they're going the Steve Austin route. Punk touches two corners, and then Drew stops him, breaking the momentum. Uh, okay. And then I had to note, I had to know, I had to wonder. I said, I wonder, I don't know how many of this, how many of you even would know this. I, said, I wonder if this would be the Sting versus Vader ending of three each, getting three, three posts each. And then, like them, Punk would be leaping over the back trying to get the last but knocking Drew into it, and thus the heel winning. But thanks to, um, oh, whew, oh my goodness. You ever clear your nose and your eyes feel like you can see the future? Um, I was um, like Zemo. I wonder if, um, oh my goodness, I'm losing my train of thought. I've lost my train of thought, y'all. My bad. I am not right right now. I'm going to just read my notes and move on. Because this that was bad. My bad. I don't mean to do that to y'all. <sighs> Drew pulls out the bracelet. He adorns it. And then he hits um, Claymore kick. I call it the shining black. Uh, he gets three corners. Pump breaks the momentum. With the second go to sleep of the night. Punk hits a third go to sleep. And then touches two corners, hit another go to sleep before touching a third corner. I'm like, he is messing his dude up. Punk can easily hit the fourth corner, but he goes after Drew. And I'm like, this is a bad move, dude. You know, I know it's your finisher and all, but all Drew got to do is just leg trip you and that's it. You know, but he hits the fourth go to sleep and then gets the bracelet off, puts it on. And then he touches the fourth buckle. Win the match. Great ending. That was a great, that was good. That was good. Touch, pow, touch, pow, touch, pow. Get my stuff. Pap. Final, get the win. Oh, train of thought come, came back. Whew. Because I wrote great ending. Um, Zemo had to inform me, and I think also Tal, Tal Jones informed me that Punk was really the heel in this, stopping Drew and starting this crap in the first place. So it's kind of like the, the bad guy won but got cheered. That's that's pesky villainy right there. Um, but still, it was a good ending. And I'm trying to figure out why are they making sure Drew can't get a foothold. 
I'm trying to figure it. Anybody else out there know? Drew is losing a lot. Drew is starting to look weak. He's having good matches. This was a damn good match. This was. They didn't go too far. And they and, and, and they beat on each other. And Punk was like, I have to keep doing these go-to-sleeps to make sure he don't get up and, and stop me. They did a good job. It's a good job. But Drew looks like championship material. Why are they doing this? Because... I like to see either of these two. Now, somebody's going against Seth Rollins, and that's going to be Punk. That's got to start. But Drew should be going after Gunther or whoever will be champion at the end of this event. But Punk stands with his with a foot on Drew's chest in triumph. Punk takes a pic, some pictures with the fans and celebrates. This match was so important. It looks like he won a major title. That's how everyone is cheering. That's how he's, you know, boasting and stuff. And I wrote, that's how you do a proper rival. It, it, it is. This is how you do it. The supposed babyface wins. Um, that's how it go. Now we get the mixed tag team grudge match. I need to hurry this up. Oh, man. The later it gets, the worse it's going to get for me. And it's... 12.29 a.m. Judgment Day's Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan, uh, they got severe booze on their intro, versus the Terror Twins, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. Uh, they didn't really do too much notes on this, but I was wondering how they was going to do this match. I've seen a few in the past. And this, if you want to know, everybody is, is, is Lucha Rules, basically. Almost, almost. Um, a lot better than what AEW does. I'll, I'll give it that. <clears throat> um, the faces have a good long intro and control the opening of the match. The fans chant they want mommy and erupted when she got in. They chanted, who's your daddy when Dominic was getting beat on by uh, Damien. Now, here's what I don't understand. How y'all going to have this match? When the previous night, Dominic got jobbed out. He got squashed. He got, that was a one-sided ass whooping that Damian Priest gave him. I don't understand. I'm like, this match shouldn't last too long because the opposing team would get squashed, right? Rhea, I mean, the Terror Twins are, I mean, come on. So, uh, uh, anyway, so, um, the fans, they boo when the heels are in control. Eventually, the heels take over with the Dominic in control. Damien makes a hot tag, and Ripley was on fire against Liv, and, and she was. She, Liv got something. I just don't know what it is, and I ain't talking about some disease or anything. I'm just saying this. There's something about it. I'm like, I don't think she's being used right. And I honestly think she would do really well with a haircut. It's too long. It's all over the place. You can't see what's happening with her. I ain't say cutting it short. Don't, don't cut it short like Holly Berry, but I'm just, it's too much. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not exactly a fan of the women when they have super long, fluffy hair. Because you can't see anything that they do. Um, with Liv down, Dominic finally recovering in the corner. Ripley set her eyes on him. And the fans kind of erupted when she did that. Liv failed to sneak attack Rhea and Rhea messes her up. Messes up Don. Uh, not Don, but Dom. Dominic. And then Liv, uh, Liv blocked Rhea. Uh, yeah, she blocked the riptide that she was about to put on Dominic. And then at that point, the heels take over. Rhea survives a uh, Rhea survives Liv's uh, high end signatures, and they both make tags with Damian taking over easily. Priest hits his 180 clothesline for a two, a, a saved two count. The faces get ready with dual bell claps, 
and dual razor's edges or diamond death drops, whichever you want to call them. Judgment Day run in and distract the faces. Rhea takes a sunset flip bomb and is thrown into the barricade. That looked bad. And I think maybe that was a, I don't know, maybe that was ill-aimed, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Priest takes a beating but he kicks out the frog splash. Liv tag is tagged in and, and nearly misses Ripley on a dive, nearly killing her damn self. Ripley turns uh, Ripley turns it around for a bit, and Liv tried to make a move that didn't go well. I, I don't I don't know what Liv was trying to do. Priest fights back on the outside, beating all the Judgment Day, so he just proved their worth. Dominic tries a running move on the uh, on the announce table, but takes a clothesline instead. Ripley hits Riptide for a three-count on Liv Morgan. Baby faces win. They celebrate very well in the ring. Uh, whew. So now we get to, is it, is it, is it, is it? Yeah, the main event. Main event of the evening. And look, they got all this action. They got, this is good stuff, y'all. This is good stuff. And it didn't take four hours. It didn't take six hours. I wasn't going to watch that pre-show. I wasn't going to do that. Anyway. So, now we get to the World Wrestling Entertainment Heavyweight Championship match. This is the legend killing Viper with some other monikers that he lost. Randy Orton versus the ring general Gunther. And... I was pre-half annoyed with this match. But they proved me wrong. I'm glad about that. But I was annoyed because I was like, okay, here's Randy. What, what, how, how are they going to have this guy just God mode a win out of this? And who's the baby face? Who's the baby face? But there's a lot of... This is fan interaction. Okay, the fans were chanting their asses off, delaying the start of the match. Okay, now, I'm going to say it, but not what you think. You know, you all in Berlin, Germany, y'all close to Lyon, France. Y'all, uh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to say y'all the match. It's even. It's dead even. I'm, I'm getting to why. Okay? So, it's going to be Berlin Leon. That'd be a nice name for somebody. Um, so, here's the thing. The, the fans were chanting. They gave this a major fight feel. Orton, Gunter. They lock up, or Walter. They lock up. And it's good. It's a good lockup. Calling elbow tie up, showing their strength. Gunter has Randy down, and the fans get a wave going. Okay, saw this on SmackDown. They're doing the damn wave. Randy escapes the hold, and he gets up, and he's the match. They pause the match. The wrestlers had to pause, the match. and Randy called this match. But this is Randy called. Randy called this match. But he was in he was awestruck. That that pulled me into the match more. When the wrestlers can acknowledge certain things, but yet don't mess up the match. This was good. He's looking around and they're doing the wave. He watches the wave go around a few times and he can't help but smile about it. It's like you can see on his face, what the hell? That Randy's been wrestling for so long. Like so many, it's like, well, I'm out here, I'm doing my thing, it can't nothing really surprise me. No, he got surprised. I'm like, these people are doing the wave. Randy then joins in the wave. He he goes up in the fence, like, yeah. That pops the fans even more. Then he points to Gunter, and Gunter, he does not participate. But everyone did clap that there was that the wrestlers didn't acknowledge them and stuff. So that's great. That is I was like, I'm I'm sold on this match. At that juncture, I'm sold on this match. It was, that, was, that was it. 
the fans started it, the wrestlers ended it. I'm like, I'm good. Y'all sold me on this match. Now I just want to enjoy it. That's all it was at that point. Randy took the anger out of me. The fans took that little anger out of me. Now I just want to watch the match. I don't see Mr. God mode anymore. I see a person that's going to do his damnedest to win. That's what they did for me. So, Berlin fans, thank you. Um, oh, man. <laughs> so, Gunta kills the joy with a massive chop, but the fans began chanting and clapping, and they did not let up. Gunta slowly works on Randy, who begins fighting back with a strike exchange with the chop to stop all, all from the champion. And I'm like, this is kind of going not the way I thought. Randy makes a comeback and, and he works the arm of the champion outside the ring and he's working it. Outside, Randy dominates with backdrops on the table and more. And I was like, okay, Randy's got his stick to go through and he is messing up the champion. I was like, shouldn't the baby face be the one having to fight back after a devastating beating? But that's what's going on. I'm like, I, I thought Randy was the baby face. Um, back in the ring, Randy works the arm even more. And this removes the sting and power of not just the chops, but the sleeper choke as well. And eventually that's going to take away the lariat. So work, and he's working the right arm, not the left. Keep that in mind. He's working the right arm. They always work the left. He's working the right arm. So, and I had to note, I don't get to say this too often. Actually, it's rare. I don't think I've ever said this, actually, anything. I love seeing a game plan at work. That's the hallmark of a good wrestling match. I just want y'all to know that. That's the hallmark of a good wrestling match. A a, a game plan not just moves you hit your moves and you go home no there is a game plan and that was obvious you could see it when uh the was watching this with me and she was really she was mesmerized at how randy did his entrance and how slow and methodical giving the cameraman time to do stuff you know what's coming I'm giving you time to do it and she saw i saw the interview where Randy talked about that. And the fact that she could see that and she never seen that interview, that was good. Or at least I think she didn't see it. I can't remember what I showed her and not show her so many months ago. But so later, Gunter, he fights back with a few Larias, but there's barely anything behind him. Beautiful selling. Beautiful. Orton hit a good superplex, leaving he and the champion ailing on the mat where Randy eventually covers for a two count. They go back and forth with Guta selling the arm like a pro, but Randy pokes him in the eye and he smiles about it. Smiles at his little handiwork. And, and when he poked him, the fans are like, dude, you can hear those questionable boos. Questionable boos. And Randy's like, yeah, I, I, I know I did bad. You know, so I'm like, okay, so are you the good bad guy? But that'd be Tama Tonga. So... Randy, he hit Green Killer. I won't look it, but I heard that that draped DDT. So I was like, okay, that's Green Killer. And the fans are starting to chant RKO. I don't know if it's for the finisher or just for him. So in control, Randy boasts to the fans and gets into his and gets into his stance and stuff for the Ace Crusher. He starts boasting for it, you know. But then he's countered into a German suplex. Gunther hit the drop kick, then hit a diving body press for a two count. Uh, Gunter's arm is so hurt. He had to underhook the leg of Randy making an unorthodox cover. Game plan at work, having making your opponent having to do things at a awkward and uncomfortable way. Because there was no way Gunter would be able to hold such a, a, a pin anyway. Gunter's arm stops him from hitting the power bomb. He tries it two more times and he keeps failing. Randy tries a back body drop, but that fails. Gunter then blocks and hits the power bomb, but only for a two count. I'm like, that was a nice exchange, beautiful exchange. They did great on that. 
Um, it's, it's, I'm like, I'm in this. I'm typing, but I'm in this match. I am in it. Um, Gunter fails to hit another power bomb. Randy hits the Ace Crusher, but only for a two count. Um, and it's like, this is out of nowhere. No, I saw, I saw, I saw it happening. I saw it happening. Diamond Dallas Page would hit it out of nowhere. That, that, that was out of nowhere. Randy goes outside, clears off the announce table, and when he should have stayed on the champ. I'm like, what is this sports entertainment crap? But I had to note that. I was like, this is sports entertainment, and it takes away from the feel of the fight. You got him, you got him hooked. You got him beat. He kicks out. All right, stay on him. No, I'm going to roll out the ring and give him time to recover. No. Randy bat drops the champ on the steps. That was brutal. Randy is messing up the champ on these steps and the table. And I'm like, come on. I'm like, Gunter looks like the baby face. He's fighting from underneath. Why is the champion, this dude got to fight from, I know Randy's a little bit bigger, but Gunter has the presence. Gunter is, I'm not, when I see Gunter, I, I'm like, this is just Rocky IV. This is Ivan Dragov. I'm like, this dude is going to mess you up. He don't care about you. He don't care about himself so long as he hurts you. That's how he look like. I, I love Walter slash Gunter's look and presence. You don't see this in wrestling much. He looks unstoppable. He looks not like a... He looked like boss. Just straight up boss to, to, to hurt you. Randy uses the steps to elevate Gunther into a backdrop slam onto the announce table, collapsing it. In the ring later, Gunther shoves the Ace Crusher off that Randy was trying to apply slowly, but then he applied the sleeper choke. Randy fights out for a little bit. Randy slowly tries to hit the Ace Crusher, only to get chopped in the back, right in the back. You can see him. You can also see Randy slightly prepare for it, but it is what it is. And as Cedra has said, you can see the sweat aerosol off his back from that chop. And the sleeper was applied again. Randy falls back, um, breaking the sleeper. And the champ lurches up from the dead and applying it. Collar and elbow strikes, applies the sleeper. Randy goes out. Guta or Valter, he retains. Good match, good ending, good fight, no interference, no crap. It was mano a mano. That's how it should be done. That was good. Post-match, Randy recovers. Gunter stands wearing the belt. Gunter extends, extends his hands. It will extend his hand. Randy shakes his hand. Massive pop. Great ovation. Fans loved it. I don't know what was about to happen after that, but that's where the show ended. I thought that was really damn good. That event, not a waste of time. I loved it. Bash in Berlin was damn good. So I hope y'all enjoyed that event. I enjoyed it. I'm going to rest my voice now because that's exactly what I need to do. I got to watch SmackDown. I'll do that tomorrow. Then we're just going to shut up for a while because, whew. All right, done projecting. So with that, this has been Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on WWE's Bash in Berlin premium live event. And with that, I want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. Don't get a cold. Please don't. And if you do, Drink plenty of fluids and make sure you eat. And that's going to help. And plenty of oranges. I just love oranges. Okay. With that, I want to see you when next time.